has to continue to, oh, he's hurt. He's hurt from that right hook. Looking at Cajas. Left hand comes in, right to the body, right hook. Welcome to Highlights PH. Gentlemen, this As is for always, the IBF Junior Don't forget to subscribe and be notified. You've received your instructions in the dress room. Remind me to protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Here and okay is good. Here and okay is good. Touch gloves. German and Cop training stress the difference of being on a Marine base back home. And let's see if we see a change compared to what he's looked like in his most recent fights. Well, it's going to be very important, Nye, early. Unai coming off seven straight wins, six wins by KO. So he's going to come in confident. He's going to come and attack in Cajas from the opening bell. Dre, he wasn't bashful about saying what his strategy would be throughout the night. He said, hey, if I have to throw ten punches just to land one big... In our fighter meeting, very confident, very poised. We talked about the crowd maybe being against him. Uh, there's a large Filipino contingency here in the bank. Then Ancajas likes it inside, and we're going to find the fight inside early. So we'll see if he if he sticks to his word. Ancajas just off the mark a little bit with the left hand. But, you know, both guys right now trying to figure out range before they take risks. Figure out range, punching power, and just trying to get in position to be able to land their shots. Cajas with a right hook, southpaw right hook for Encajas, comes back with it. And Encajas can throw to the body, he can rip rights and lefts to the body when he wants to, but he wants it mid-range and, and outside. That's when he's at his best, in my opinion. Encajas right there, missing with the big looping left hand. He's going for the home run already. But the downside to Encajas being outside is he doesn't move his head, he doesn't really show any different wrinkles in his defensive game he stands straight up he's very traditional in, in his stance and the way his, his offensive approach is and therefore he can get hit with straight slot shots like we just saw him get hit with well, a lot of times on has come right back to the middle dre so he'll throw a punch and he come right back to the middle instead of stepping around and getting on the angle to be able to get away from the punches of funai See, just like that he stepped out look and funai can fight on the outside as well but like he told us in the fighter meals doesn't feel like Ancajas likes a fighter to be close to him. He feels like Ancajas gets very uncomfortable. U.S. debut for Yuichi Funai. There's a left hand from the Titleist. Ten seconds. End of round number one. IBF Junior Bantamweight title. Time! The Stockton Arena on a fight card bookend by World Title Fight Junior Bantamweight IBF World Championship. Nice shots already, already at the gate from Encajas. You know, really finding a mark now. Headbutt the there. Head. But you know, when Encajas goes down to the body first, it sets up things up top. You know, and Cajas is kind of abandoning his jab. Normally, I see Cajas shoot this sharp, stiff jab. You know, really heavy on the front foot. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of that tonight, Dre. Take advantage of the over-aggression of Funai with that check right hook that we saw him land several times in the first round. It's a natural punch for Cajas, and he's landed it mm -hmm. several times, and he's also starting to bring that straight left back behind him. Yeah, there he goes with the lead left that time as he was wide swinging to the outside, but much success with that right hook in round number one. Yeah, Tess, he got to be careful swinging wide like that. I saw that coming. You know, Funai, all he has to do is throw the right hand straight down the middle, and it's going to catch in Cajas and probably drop him. The kind of punches that Ancajas has landed so far, you'll say, hey, they're not that hard. They're just, you know, stinging type shots. But let the fight progress. Those same shots in round five, six, and seven could drop or knock the opponent out if they land right. Funai was just probing to the body that time after, or excuse me, Ancajas after Funai came forward with the right hand. Funai starting to find his mark with the right hand. Every now and then, Ancajas would sit still just for a moment and don't do anything. And Funai just shoot the right hand right down the middle and catch Ancajas with it. As he should with that situation. There's a straight left that split the guard from Ancajas. And to that combination, also placed a right hand to the body. 
That's the thing about Encajas. Encajas can actually be, he's a great counter puncher. So he's in range, he can get out of range, move his head, and then come back with counters. He's quick enough and has good position to be able to do so. And Dre, you know, we talk about southpaws all the time. They always look for the, the, the backhand. You know, and Cajas is a natural right-hander, mm -hmm. and he's converted to southpaw, so it's his strong hand. So the the right hook is his power punch. That's why we see him landing it the way that he has, uh, and, and it seems effortless for him. And he also has a great jab, too, Ten seconds. to, you know, make the point that you just made. Both guys left. coming in, and a left hand scores well from Cajas. End of two. Time! of the year in the Philippines. That's when Jerwin and Cajas was able to break through, claim his world championship, and string together. It's all the effectiveness of that right hook, left hand combination. Well, again, a natural punch for Cajas, but he really didn't want to land the right hook on the, in that sequence. He really wanted the straight left. Here we see just a blinding short right hook, and then the straight left comes right out of range and then come back to land his own right hand. But Cajas was just a little bit quicker with his left hand and on the mark. And Funai keeps getting hit with those kind of shots because he's standing still and he's standing right in the range of Ankajas. Well, Saw CompuBox tallying up a 36 to 19 connect advantage for the world champion, Jerwin and Cajas. Bernardo Asuna, good evening to you. What are they saying in his corner? Joven Jimenez is not very happy with the defense of Jerwin. He says, I like his offense. He's landing the right hook, but he's got to use his jab more. And as you see right away, Funai right now is stepping up the tempo, pushing the pace. He's okay with that. He's okay with taking those punches. He's trying to just close the gap on Encajas and pressure him. That's one way of beating the southpaw. You pressure him. You pin him against the ropes. You outwork him. You take those angles away from him. And don't allow him to extend with that backhand. Considerable infighting here from Funai. This is where Funai wants to be, and I, and I because Ancajas is very tricky, he's very crafty, and I'm telling you, he's lining Funai up for that straight left and that right hook. Well, athletically, he's not going to be able to compete with a guy like Ancajas, so he's he's stepping inside, and he knows that. On the outside, he's, he's not quick enough, so I need to close the gap, and I need to get this guy comfortable so I can land my hard shot, that power right hand that Funai has. So Funai needs to be inside in mid-range. I agree with that, but I don't agree with the fact that he needs to sit there and take shots. No, not take shots, Dre, but, he, you know, he got to get him comfortable somehow to be able to sit there and be comfortable so that way he can line him up for the right hand. Guys, I tell you, these guys inside, this is an attractive third round. If you watch some of the little angles on the inside, dig into the body, some of these uppercuts, this has been an entertaining third round here. At this distance, just wrapping around even that left hand by Funai, then wrapping around the elbow with the right hand to the body by Ankajas. This is good stuff. Yes, it this is. is high level stuff Ten right seconds. here, championship level stuff. We see a lot of will, but we see a lot of skill, like you said, Tess. Good combination from Ankajas, and then Funai comes right back. Look at that trade to end the third. He's a Stockton homegrown product. He's coming up after our first of two world title fights here. He's on the side where the right hand is, right in the line of fire. And Funai has to continue to, oh, he's hurt. He's hurt from that right hook. Look at Encajas. Left hand comes in, right to the body, right hook. He's got the challenger in trouble here early in round four. Encajas looking as good as he had recently. Here he comes, the champ on the attack. Can the Japanese challenger Funai hold up? Trying to trade with Encajas. Wide sweeping right hand that time as Funai now settles down and tries to wrap a lot of success from Encajas with that short right hook. Yeah, he's catching him as he's coming in. And there's a left hand that splits the guard. He's hurt, Tess. Very hurt. That straight left hurt. Funai very, very much. And, and Dre, I haven't seen Funai tied not once. He just put it all the That's line. not his game. He's getting lined up oh. by every shot that Ankahas throws right now. And Man. now Ankahas is going oh. to the body, which is not a good sign. How did he stand up to that? Right hand to the body again. Missed the belt line that time. Sweeping with the right hand one more time. There's still over a minute to go here for Funai. And Kaha showing that championship lining up. That right hook, he just missed it right there. Some blood coming from the nose of Funai. 
Cajas looking for the, the kill shot right here. Looking to land the overhand left. Left hand landed flush again. That's the shot that right hook right again as blood flew from the face of Funai. See that? That's straight and another one. Yeah. That's straight left right there, Tess. It's just a blinding shot. That's a waste shot. You see how he's leaning to the side right there? Yes. And Cajas wants the right hook. That's it. How in the world has Yuichi Funai stood up to all of this? He has not been knocked down in this brutalizing fourth round. Ten seconds. It's called heart, Tess. That's what it is. Yeah, heart. but they need to look to stop this because this kid's taking a lot of punishment right now. Ooh, good body shot. Underneath with the left hand to the body. No knock down the fourth round, but you could justify a 10-8 round. Oh, absolutely. And Jerwin and Cajas, let's see how he approaches the start of this fifth. Look at the power punch right now in Cajas. He needs to set it up off the jab, and it'll come. It will come. Now, Cajas threw a lot of punches in that last round, so he had a minute breather, but he needs a, a little bit more time, it looks like. So he's just trying to line Funai up for the right shot, because if he gets him hurt again, Funai's going to be on his way. And again, the referee and the doctors really have to keep an eye on this kid because he's probably too tough for his own good. That's right now. He wants to waste that straight left and land a devastating right hook. That's what he's looking for. And I don't think Funai is computing that that's what Ankahas is looking for. I think he's still hurt from the previous round. Yeah, he's a little hurt, but it almost seems like Ankahas is kind of taking it lightly this round on him. You know, letting him recover. Just trying to get a breather. He threw a lot of punches in that last round, too. A lot of punches. A lot of heavy punches. That's the There's case. the left hand from Ankahas, and he tries to come back with it. I think he's recharged right now. I think he's about to come on right now. And I'm talking about Ankahas. Unai just escaped that combination, just got out at the right time and got the right distance to get away from the shots from Ankahas. There it is. He has so much success with the right hook. You forget about that, the jab, right? Forget about everything. I mean, you do. You know, you land hard shots. You want to continue to land hard shots. We're going to take a very short break here and come right back to this title fight. Stay with Time. us. He's won the world title. He spent $5,000. Remember, he grew up abject poverty. Never had money, even when he was a young pro. Then he spent five grand on a piece of land in the Philippines that he referred to as his survival camp. That's where he did it. Defense test. Yes. And... You know, he hasn't really have, he don't have an identity yet. He don't even have a blueprint on what makes him tick. He's still trying to figure that out. And that's the problem I have being a world champion and having seven title defenses, Dream. Yeah, I, I like the adjustment our Kaha's made uh, by, you know, less is more. Getting a lot of people away, keeping a simple team, the people that were there from the beginning, and just hitting reset. Yeah. And it looked like it served them well in this fight so yeah. far. And you guys called exactly the fact that Angas sort of punts himself out there. You watch numbers in that fourth round. He threw 88 power punches. 88 alone in that fourth round. He's got, got to be a little disturbed later, and Funai is still looking you in the yes, face. Yes, it's an impressive well, game guy, isn't he, the challenger? Well, if you're digging him down to the body, you're going to take some of that steam away. But, you know, you got the challenger here, Funai, that's gaining confidence moving forward. And yet he's eating hooks and left hands. Three straight, four straight left hands. And another one from the champ. And another split in the guard. Can't get out of the way of these straight left hands. See, but don't back off, Encajas. Don't back off. Keep coming. You know, change the rhythm. Change the pace. Throw three, four, five, six punch combinations. You got your man hurt? I think Encajas knows exactly what he's doing. He's inflicting punishment. He's stepping back, allowing the punishment to kind of soak in a little bit. And then he's inflicting more punishment. Now the right hook comes back into play. Nice shot from Encajas. Step back. Half a step back. And dropped the straight left hand short. Oh, got hit with a short little uppercut up the middle from but, Funai. Yeah, I've said it several times. I'm not trying to overstate the point and take away from a great fight, but they really have to keep an eye on Funai. Mm. It's not the concussive shot all the time. It's the sub-concussive shot. Yeah. This kid is taking a lot of punishment, and, he, and he's still game, so they have to save him from himself. Dre, these are the kind of fights where I worry about a fighter's health. When you're standing up to everything, when you haven't been knocked down, when you're this game showing this much heart the way Funai is. Yes. Ah! 
bruise the face of Yuichi Funai is. You see the referee Edward Payantes take a look at him. Ringside Time. position is right up on the apron again. Dr. Gary Furness is leading the crew here for the California Commission. Never took a peek at him. Okay, that's it. That's it. And I think that is the right move. This kid is that's tough. It. This kid will take all night long. But we started to get the feeling sitting here ringside about halfway through the last round that it had reached that point. I think that is in the absolute best interest of the fighter. Yes, it was. And it, it's absolutely justified. Absolutely. There's no need to boo. Excellent call by the doctor. We don't always see those kind of calls. Tremendous job. Great performance from Ankahas. And a game effort from Funai. That was an impressive steady output from Sherwin in Cajas in a title defense. He's back. He's back. That's what I want to see. That dog. You know, punch of power, speed, accuracy, boxing ability. And Cajas did it all tonight. That the champ had with the left hand. Yep, all straight left hands. He stepped back. Straight left hand. Caught him right in between the shot. Straight left hand. As Funai would move back and pull back and try to get in range. And Cajas would come straight down the middle with a straight left hand. He could not miss this shot. His defense is his feet. He gets out of range and then he gets back in the range. Get out of range and gets back in range. He needs to work on his defense if he wants to continue boxing. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of one second in round number seven. Our referee in charge, Edward Coyantes, stops the contest upon advice of the ringside physician. He is the winner by way of technical knockout and still the IBF Junior Bantamweight Champion of the World, Jerwin Pretty Boy,